was that? Uh, I was uh, um, uh, designated as acting um, in uh, November, uh, in November of uh, 2012. 2012. And I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, you hold actually two titles, uh, acting director of the IRS and also deputy commissioner for services and enforcement? I do, sir. And in your role as Deputy Commissioner for Services and Enforcement, according to the IRS website, in that capacity, you direct and oversee all major decisions with regard to the tax-exempt and government ent entities division? That is a division that reports through to me through the uh, tax-exempt and government entities office, yes. So the website's accurate? Yes. And then who do you report to in that position, actually in both of your positions? First, well, as the, Deputy Commissioner for Services and Enforcement. In the Deputy Commissioner role, I would report to the Commissioner, if there was one. Without a Commissioner and holding both hats, I would report to the uh, Deputy uh, Secretary. Of? Treasury. Treasury. And is it not a violation of IRC 6103 to disclose uh, confidential taxpayer information? Uh, it is. And that really applies to all taxpayer information? I'm not quite sure what that means, to be honest. In practice, it's basically all tax. It's not just the return. It's all 6103, the uh, 6103 um, obligates us not to disclose taxpayer information. Were you ever made aware in August of 2010 that a White House official in a conference call with reporters disclosed the confidential tax structure of a private company? I probably read it in the paper, sir. Okay. You were made aware through news reports? I, I think that's probably it. It's a long time ago. Did you take any steps when you learned of that? I don't recall. I'm not, uh, I, I, don't, I don't recall. I have to go back down that, sir. All right. So you didn't inform the Inspector General of that or your superiors that you recollect? I'm not sure why I would have to notify the, the superiors. It was in, in the papers. Um, I don't remember whether we made a referral or, or uh, I made a referral at that time. All right. According to the Inspector General audit, the targeting of conservative groups began in March of 2010. Uh, when were you made aware? Uh, I was aware of that uh, on May 3rd of 2012. And how were you made aware? Uh, I was made aware of uh, not the targeting, but I was made aware of the process that was described in the TIGDA report. Um, when I asked some uh, of our people to go out and take a look at the cases subsequent to the, uh, the uh, public uh, um, discussion of overbroad letters coming out. So that would have been in your role as acting director as well as the deputy commissioner for services? And no, I, I was a deputy at that time. You were a deputy at that time. And when you say you asked some of our people, who would that have been? So um, I asked the uh, senior technical advisor for uh, tax exempting government entities to uh, lead a team and take a look and see what was going on in terms of uh, cases that had gotten those letters. Did you inform anyone of that uh, action that you took or those steps? So I did that. I, I mean, I asked, uh, I asked the uh, senior technical advisor to do that in late March, March uh, 23rd or 26th, something like that. Um, and uh, she and her team came back to talk to me in May. And subsequent to that, um, I'm sure I, I informed uh, the commissioner. But uh, the commissioner was aware of the letters as well. Did you inform anyone other than the commissioner at that time? You mean up the chain, sir? Yes. I don't believe so. Or the inspector general? The Inspector General was aware of it and had made it, made it clear to us they were aware of it and uh, were in looking at it at, at that time. Okay. Was there a time when you became aware um, of the IRS launching audits against conservative donors? That would have been in about May of 2010? Yes, that, that, uh, that um, I, don't, I don't remember the date, sir, but yeah, in, in that time frame, Again, there were press accounts and congressionals coming in talking about that. And did you learn that from the press or did you learn that from inquiries from Congress? I don't know. It could have been either. It came up in, in a meeting uh, and then it hit the press and uh, so I, I don't know. In any event, after learning of that information of the audits, did you, what steps did you take? Um, we investigated what happened. 
uh, we took a look. Uh, and ultimately, I issued uh, a, a directive that said that the law in the area was not that clear, that uh, we had not been uh, enforcing in that area uh, substantially since the period of, a, I believe, a 1982 or something like that revenue ruling that talked about gift tax and C4 organizations. And I said, let's not enforce right now. Let's talk about it, let's study it, and we will put out guidance, and that guidance will be prospective. I thought that was the fair thing to do, Mr. Camp. When you say we investigated, uh, who would that have been? And I don't, I'm not, I don't remember, but we, we took a look at the issue. We looked at how it happened, uh, and I think you were looking at it as well, your, your committee, sir. I mean, when you say we, what, what does that mean? I mean, who, who the in IRS, the agency? The IRS looked at the issue. I mean, what departments? Would have been council, um, I don't know that it was an exempt organization. I'm sorry, sir. I'm not going to be able to answer with particularity there. Um, were you ever made aware of the publication of the confidential 2008 donor list of the National Organization for Marriage, a conservative tax exempt organization? I was. And when was that? Uh, that date I'll have to get back to you on, sir. All right. But I remember the and, issue. And how did you find out? Um, don't remember. I, I, it might have been press, might have been somebody coming to us with a, with a congressional complaint. And when you learned of that publication, did you take any steps? I believe we made a referral to TIGDA, yes. At that time? And you're not sure when that referral was made? It would have been uh, in the same time frame. All right. Shortly after you became aware of it? It would have been. Were you ever made aware of the IRS leak of confidential applications for the tax-exempt status of conservative groups to um, ProPublica? I was. Again, when, when were you made aware of that? Uh, again, sir, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to give you a perfect timeline, but when it, when, uh, approximately the time that it became public is when I became aware, so you, you would know that from the timeline. Did you um, inform anyone else of that? I believe the service informed TIGDA at that time, yes. In each of these instances I've asked you about, did you ever come forward and inform the Congress? I don't believe so, unless it came up in, in, in conversation or testimony. Can I, can I suggest something, uh, Mr. Camp, on those two, uh, just to let you know? This would be the National Organization on, Marriage and on the ProPublica? Those two situations, we went to uh, TIGDA, and I think uh, uh, Mr. George can speak to what they find, what they found. Um, we made the referrals, and I believe, uh, I believe what they found was that those disclosures were inadvertent uh, and that there's been uh, discipline in, in one of those cases for somebody not following procedures. But I will, I will obviously let Mr. George speak to that. But you never informed the Congress of any of these things that you're aware of? of they any were of these in, items I've asked you about this morning? They were in the press, sir. All right. Um, well, obviously, you know, the IRS mission statement says that the role of the IRS is to help America's taxpayers understand and meet their tax responsibilities and enforce the law with integrity and in fairness to all. And I, I think clearly your mission is not being met. Um, Mr. George, I guess I would just have one last question, Mr. Miller. When asked the truth, um, and you know the truth, and you have a legal responsibility to inform others of the truth, but you don't share that truth? What is that called? Um, I always answer questions truthfully, Mr. Camp. All right, Mr. George, uh, were you ever made aware of the alleged